okay, so you graduate high school. And a couple of years later, you joined the UWF, the Japanese Universal Wrestling Federation. That was, uh, that was, that was, that was one of those things where you just kind of, I, I kind of walked into it because a friend actually introduced me to it. I watched a videotape. I saw these two guys going, I've never seen this before. Like they were like open hand striking, knee kicking, taking people down, suplexing them, going into these different little moves like submission holds. And I was looked at it and I immediately got just jacked up because I remember thinking, man, that's what I, that's what I was doing on the street, right? I mean, I was really just going and fighting people, but this was so skilled. Like these guys, when they were on the ground, they were able to put people to sleep and do all these joint locks. And I was like, dude, how do I do that? And, and I remember it was Dean Malenko who actually introduced me to it. And I said, dude, how do I get into that? And he said, man, my dad trains fighters up in Florida. And I said, man, can you t ask him, see if I can get in it? And he says, you want to do that? And he says, man, that ain't no joke. And I said, man, I want to do that. And he goes, okay. So he sent me up there to, to Florida and I did a tryout and they had a bunch of foreigners up there that were going over there. And I went through all of them just by natural wrestling and boxing skills and street stuff. Went through them pretty easy. Well, then they sent me to Japan for a tryout. And when I got the call, I was like, I'm going to Japan, man. Like I, I went from Georgia to, to California. I thought that was big. Now I'm going to Japan. And uh, so I get on a plane, I get there, uh, long flight. I mean, 12, 11, 12 hours. We get off the plane, they pick me up, take me to this dojo. I didn't even get to go to the hotel. They just took me right from the plane to the dojo. I walk in the dojo and they say, get dressed. <laughs> so I got my luggage and I was like, okay. I put all this stuff on and uh, they, I get on the mat and they sent two guys in there. And I'm like, oh, let's go. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to be tough. So I go and I first wrestle the first one. And I pretty much dominate him, right? Just, just destroy him. Another guy comes in. It was about 20, 25 minutes. I get another one. Boom, I get him. I put him down. I'm, I control him, just my wrestling and stuff. And I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I can do this. Well, what I didn't know was the two guys that they put in there to wrestle with me were, they were young boys. <laughs> they weren't fighters. And I was thinking to myself, that I, and as media as I started to get confident, um, Funaki and Suzuki, the guys that I saw on that videotape walked in, in the door. And I remember looking at them, like, oh, they look familiar. And then I started to go, that was the, those are the two guys. And so, um, I hear those guys talking to them and they start getting dressed. And then Sammy, who was the one that actually brought me over there, um, who's a Japanese promoter said, uh, you go a little bit more. And I said, yeah, I can go all day, you know, cocky. So he says, okay. So he brings out Suzuki first. Suzuki's a small one. He goes about 180 pounds, about 5'9". And um, so I get in there with him, and I'm feeling pretty good, right? And so I shoot in. I start working with him, and he gets my back. He sits out, spins around. Next thing, he's got my back. I'm fighting it. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember anything. <laughs> I'm like, I wake up, and I'm like, what happened? Like, I'd never been choked out before. Like, I didn't know what happened. And uh, Sammy goes, oh, it's okay. Uh, you, you got choked. I was like, Okay. He goes, can you go keep going? I said, yeah, I can keep going. I was getting a little discouraged. So I, we went a little bit longer. And again, we went for another 20, 25 minutes and he just destroyed me. I've never had anybody. And I was stronger than him. I was in better shape than him. Or at least I felt like I was, but he just outworked me. He spun around. He put me in ankle locks, arm bars, stuff I had never seen before. And uh, so I got done with him and I was just frustrated. I was like, man, no one's ever handled me like that before. And so I remember Sammy looked at me, he says, Hey, you go, you want to go again, go some more. And I've gone for a while now. And I was like, I was like, I got to make up for this. And I said, yeah, I, I, let's go some more. So he brings in Fanaki. Now Fanaki goes about six, one, six foot, six, one. And he's about two twenty. And so he comes in and I'm already in my mind going, if he's anything like Suzuki, I'm in trouble. And, uh, he was better than Suzuki. So <laughs> needless to say, it was about 20, 25 minutes. I just got smashed. But what I, what I didn't realize was they were looking for the determination, the I will not quit, the desire to keep going. And that's what I used my whole time in training Lions Den fighters wasn't the ability to actually win a fight. It was the ability to put them in so they were so tired that when they went in to fight, they had to have nothing but desire and heart to continue to keep fighting. And if I have that, I can train you. Okay, so you get through this, and the UWF ended up folding. And to replace it came 
the Pancreas Hybrid Wrestling Federation. And uh, that's when you actually got to uh, fight Funaki. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. So um, <laughs> here I was, I did my first fight. In front, and here's a, uh, man, I, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I mean, remember the kid I was and where I came from. Now I'm in Japan. And my first experience in front of a crowd was in front of 17,000 people. I went to this new organization. Here I am fighting in front of all these people. And uh, I ended up getting the win and uh, got my hand raised. And then I got Fanaki after that. And we went 46 minutes in my second match uh, ever uh, in a fight with Fanaki. And that right there, man, I can remember like that was yesterday. Okay. So you get through that. And then that's when UFC won that same year as when they launched. And I remember, like I said in the beginning of the interview, I used to rent these UFC tapes from Blockbuster or whatever video store I happened to live by at the time. And it was absolute insanity. And I remember the thing that really struck, you know, struck out, you know, in that first UFC one was there was no weight classes. So you had that one dude that was like 400 pounds fighting fighting this dude that looked like about 170. Remember that? Gerard Godot against Emmanuel 2-8. Two, two. There you go. Yeah, the sumo guy that weighed almost 500 pounds or something like that, man. Yeah, that was insane. And you could kick people in the face while they're down. <laughs> I think he knocked one of his teeth out. <laughs> and I think that was the fight when you saw that, when you were, you know, ready to fight yourself. You're like, oh, okay, this is real. This is a little different than what I'm used to. Well, you got to remember, this was in, what, in, in 93. And yeah. here I'm being told after I'm in Japan, I'm a champion over there. I've done a lot within a, in a year and a half, two years. Uh, and I feel like this is extreme. Like we're kicking and throwing it to the ground, doing so. I'm thinking this is extreme. And then I, I hear this thing, <laughs> the UFC, like no holes barred, anything goes. And I was like, because one of my students actually brought me a flyer when uh, when we were training. So, hey, this is no holds barred, anything goes. And I was like, oh man, throw that away. It's wrestling. And he goes, no, it's not. It's real. And I like, so I looked at it and it was talking about how it was going to chug style against style, you know, karate against boxer, who would win. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, let me check it out. But in 93, man, come on. We had sanctions. We had rules. I mean, it, it, it just didn't, you couldn't, nowhere in a gym could you do this. Like you couldn't, in a boxing ring, you couldn't go in there and take somebody to the ground. They kick you out. Or vice versa, go in a wrestling place and punch at somebody. It just, it just wasn't possible. So when they came up with this, and I remember talking to Art Davies on the phone and asking him, is this real? He basically said, no, this is real. And uh, so I remember going all the way into the very first fight uh, with my mind going, is this really going to happen? And we go right back to that fight with uh, 2A and Gerard Godot. There is absolutely no fight that could have been first to make it any better because if it was me or Hoist, people would have booed and thought it was fake. But because it was that football kick from 60 yards, put his teeth into the front row, it was like, how do you deny this is not real? I mean, like, this set the tone for what we were going to see today. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so you're fighting UFC 1. You end up beating Patrick Smith. And then you end up fighting Hoist Gracie. Yeah, the guy in the pajamas. <laughs> right, right. He showed up in his karate outfit, and you were, you know, he wasn't very big. He wasn't very muscular. no. no. He was so small. all of us, I remember watching this yeah. and I was like, okay, this guy doesn't look very impressive. We don't see this going very far. None of us really knew about uh, Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the time. And you guys ended up fighting and what happened? Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Let me tell you a story on that too because when I first got in there, I was sizing everybody up and Hoist was walking around in his gi. And I was thinking to myself, man, this guy looks like he's walking around in his pajamas, you know? It was almost like you couldn't take him serious. And he looked like a boy. I mean, he looked like a teenage boy. Uh, and he was and he was small. And, uh, you know, I think I went 190, 195 at the time. And I think he was 170, 180, something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, I thought that Gerard Godot was the one that made it to the finals because I knew him from Japan and K1. I figured that's who I would be fighting in the finals because he's in the other bracket. And so I kind of, kind of put it past. I thought Patrick Smith would be tough because he won a Sabaki challenge or something like that. 
So when I put Pat away, I figured I'd go in against Hoist. And I mean, I literally, my mind was like, why is he here? Like, really? It's like, this is not a good space for him. And so when we get in there and I remember shooting on him and I hook him and I go to throw him down and he rolls through and I'm in a side control. And the next thing I feel is something across my neck. And I'm like, okay, no one can choke me. I mean, I've been in this position before. I just pull their arm off. So I reach up to go and just yank the arm off because he's not big. It can't be strong. So I go to reach it up and there's no arm or there's arm, but there's material in between. And I can't get the, I can't pull it off. And then I, I remember tapping. And then after I tapped, I look up and I go, I just tapped. I, I just tapped. And I remember thinking to myself, how did I get choked? And I, I remember it's like, I never, I never understood until that day what that gi did. I mean, that literally eliminated any power, any strength I had over him. Once he had it around my neck, I was not getting it off. And so for me, I think that was, and I actually, I was talking with Hoyce a couple nights ago. And uh, I remember saying to him, that was the one instant where it forced me to wake up and train harder and start being more, um, I guess, more towards my craft and figuring out more disciplines rather than staying in one thing. Because when we were in Japan, we just did the Panker style and I wasn't looking outside of that. But there was a whole other world out there besides what I was doing because I thought that was it. So it really opened up my eyes to really train better, become a better better fighter, and, and train better at different crafts and learn more things rather than being focused on one thing.